Good morning, folks. We're starting here in 304 angstroms of light from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Plasma, standing tall at the limb, keeping an eye on the small sunspots rushing out ahead of him. They've been getting feisty, but lack such a rebellious mindset that they dare challenge the Earth-facing solar quiet effect. Let's begin today's analysis with earthquakes. You'll remember yesterday we showed the volcano eruption right on the OLR anomaly the night before. Indonesia had both positive and negative anomalies in tight, a Delta-class Earth spot. And we've also been monitoring anomalies building along the west coast of the Americas from Alaska down to Central America. But let's jump back across the Pacific. An hour after yesterday's news posted to the internet, a 6.9 struck that exact same area. Based on last night's OLR anomalies, I can take neither Indonesia or the Americas off alert, but looking ahead, we can forecast this anomaly to hit the ring of fire tonight just south of Japan. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and watch the last 24 hours of our star. Surface activity on the rise at the sunspots, but there have been only more sea flares, and there's not much danger for huge ones. The sunspots are small and spread, and the Earth-facing quiet effect is in full swing. But please note the newest region is the one that rocked a quadrillion cubic miles of solar atmosphere during the sun-diving comet approach three days ago. A bit of learning. So this is the photosphere, the lowest level we see, but just above that we can find tenuous coverage in layer after layer. Black is not seeing down inside the sun, it just means we're not detecting particles in that wavelength of light down to the surface. So it's black, just like the surrounding space, where it registers no particles as well. So that is why coronal holes look black. There is a lack of particles detected in the corona. But putting it all together, you can also see why nano flares and small fields can still be seen flashing inside of those dark holes. It's not inside the sun, it's actually just near the surface while the majority of that pink stuff is being registered far, far above that. In the gamma spectrum, yesterday's Aquila burst was followed this morning down south from Hydrus. Solar wind shows density in orange bulging up and then dropping off as yellow speed and green plasma temperature rise. That's the second coronal hole stream impact I mentioned yesterday and a geomagnetic storm was already produced this morning. Disruption should persist all day. I got a link for you guys below to the odd temperature flip we saw in November. Compared to October, yeah, that's a nice flip-flop. Let's head to the weather and jump in on the Desmond hit areas of Europe. The next storm is in the Atlantic and is going to be heading in over the next few days. Still got a major struggle in the northwest U.S. dealing with their ocean-driven storm line. Not going to stop here either. Down under, we've got a lot of scattered rain, but to be perfectly honest, it's hard to ignore the Indian Ocean Cyclone heading down to Reunion on the left there. Interesting name, by the way, for that island down near the Atlantis Bank. Folks, over at suspiciousobservers.org, we've got some videos for you to learn more about OLR and earthquakes. If you scroll down on the homepage, past the morning news, the next two videos are about earthquakes and both are helpful in general. It's the second one that's about OLR. And for more detailed discussion on OLR, check out last month's Deeper Look episodes. We did two OLR episodes last month. Also, folks, I'll remind everyone that not only is this our last conference for a while, but we cannot really film this one like we did in Pittsburgh. Interest has been very low in the videos from our last conference, and just can't swing that for Phoenix. If you're there, you're there. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.